Hello everybody, welcome to CommitHandle.com. So, in this lecture, we're going to start off with the practice question 5. And here's the question. Already in here's a note regarding to the question. So read the question, try to solve it yourself, and then we'll compare your answer with my answer. Alright, so assumed that you solve it. If yes, if no, or if you're comparing, we're going to solve it here. So, let's understand the question first. So, the question states to create pseudocode for a program which inputs a valid number. And what do we mean by the term valid number? It's written here. A valid number, in this case, is the number which is greater than 1. Which inputs a valid number and outputs the factorial of it. I'm going to quickly revise here what factorial is. The factorial of 4, or let's suppose 3, for example. 3 factorial is denoted by the exclamation sign after the number and it means the value of 3 into 2 into 1 which will be 6 all right if i say let's suppose 4 factorial it will be of course 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 till it goes 1 it will be 24 and 5 factorial like so will be 120 and so on so the question is that we have to input a number and the program should calculate the factorial of it the final value of it so, the variables we will use is, of course, the number we'll input. I'll just say it num. All right, it will be declared as an integer. Of, okay, uh, because, of course, factorial can only be calculated for integer numbers. So, I'm going to put this here. Integer, I'm going to write in for short for now. I'm going to write integer full. Okay, num integer. Then, what we're going to do is we're also going to have another variable called factorial which will be outputted so i'll write it as f factorial all right or fac uh, for meaning identifier uh, identify name so let's just write factorial just full right and of course this has to be integer as well i'm going to write int for short for now and of course we have the i for the for loop which we're going to use here so let's number down the lines one, two, three. It's a relatively short program, but it's quite hard. All right, we're going to have to use something out of the box here. Um, so, uh, so, the thing is that we need to first input a number. The number, then we have to validate. We need to check if the number is valid or not. If the number is valid, it's going to proceed on to the rest of the program. If the number is not valid, it's going to uh, tell uh, and repeat to enter the program uh, again and again and again uh, till the number you enter is a valid number. Okay, then after we enter a valid number, we need to calculate, uh, we need to create an algorithm, essentially a for loop through which we will calculate the sending variables of uh, the number we've entered till the number reaches 1. And uh, after that happens, we're going to uh, assign the value to factorial and then we're going to end the program. So let's start off. I'm going to leave the two lines uh, for declaration. Uh, okay. In fact, we're going, to the first, uh, we're going to use the first line to declare num. Declare num, comma, factorial as integer. Both, of course need to be integer. I'm going to leave a line here uh, for safety. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to input a number and then I'm going to check if that number is valid or not. All right. And uh, the way we're going to do that is that we're going to use a repeat loop. Okay, we're going to use a repeat loop. And the repeat loop will essentially repeat itself until the condition is true, until the number is greater than 1. Okay, so we're going to say, actually, I'm going to start from line 2. I'm pretty sure we don't need another declaration somewhere here. All right, so um, what I have to write, uh, yeah, repeat loop. Repeat. What's the process? Input number or input num right until 
the num is greater than so. So repeat input number until num is greater than one. All right, so this will ensure that the program will keep on inputting the number till a valid number defined by the criteria here is entered. All right, now after that's done, we're going to now uh, use uh, the algorithm to uh, use this uh, fact uh, to create an algorithm uh, in the for loop to calculate the factorial. So I have a question. 3 factorial, as we mentioned above, is 3 into 2 into 1. Can we write 3 factorial as 1 into 2 into 3? Which means 1 to n. 1 to 3, actually. Then 5 factorial is also 1 to 5. 7 is 1 to 7. So, if this is the number we're going to input, can we mention a standardized formula 1 to number? All right, and this is what we're going to do here. We will create, for the first time, we will create a for loop in which actually the upper bound is a variable. It is a variable on its own. So let's implement it here. Okay, so we had to implement a for loop. So we're going to do that just here. For i, this time it's going to be not one to any constant number, but a variable which will be num in this case for i one to num and then i'm going to imagine a next here somewhere and we just have a single step and i'm going to explain you that like so all right we're going to have next here and just in the loop we'll have one statement of the entire program the entire algorithm and that will be factorial factorial times the star indicates the multiplication i and we need an initial value for the factorial which we're going to of course set as one in the above given line and then we're going to say print factorial and our answer is complete now let's really see what's going on here by creating a a driver or driving the program by creating a truth table for it all right so we're gonna have the values um we have i we have num and then we have factorial i'm gonna just write it f okay i'm gonna create a nice and neat truth table and i'm gonna imagine that i'm inputting the number four or well, let's be at four, yeah, four. Or five, or oh, let's be at five. All right, so let's be the number five. Okay, so declare num, repeat input num until num is greater than one. Now let's suppose the num I enter is five. Okay, factorial is assigned the value of one here. And then i is assigned the value of one to num. So now, when i will be one, which means I will, the loop will run five times. The factorial value will be multiplied by the factorial times i. So, uh, the value of i is 1. The value of factorial is 1. Right? So, the new value of factorial will remain 1. Quite simple. Then, the loop will proceed on to the second time. The value of i will now turn 2. Okay? And when the value of i is 2, the factorial of the old value factorial 1 will be multiplied by the value new value of i 2 to get the new value of factorial which is going to be 2 okay then loop repeating for the third time i will be 3 and this time what we're going to do is we're going to have the value of i 3 to the old value of factorial 2 3 into 2 to get the new value of factorial which will be 6. Right? Quite a simple yet tricky and hard algorithm. And the same goes on. The old value factorial 6 multiplied by 4 to get the new value factorial 
which is going to be 24 and 5, 120, the loop will cut off and print factorial uh, output will be 120 here. So this is the way we calculate factorial in a program. We assign the value of factorial to 1, then we multiply it by the, 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 by the nth, or you can say the ith value of time, the for loop is repeating till the number you entered initially is reached. All right, 5 is, we can say, that 5 is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5, like we said here, right? 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. So, what we do is the value of factorial is 1, then we multiply it by 2 to get 2. Then we multiply it by 3 to get 6. Then we multiply that by 4 to get 24, followed by a multiplication of 5, of course, to get 120. And this is done by a loop. The loop is the value of num is increasing. Then the value of i is increasing till the value of i reaches the value of num which you inputted. And this is how we conclude this program. Please, 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 if you are confused, you uh, watch the lecture again and again and again till you solidify in this hard uh, question. It's very simple, very uh, uh, short, but yet a hard question for many out there. So that's it for this lecture. Uh, thank you for viewing this lecture at computerhandle.com. Take care, everybody.